When using a controller, have you ever wondered which connection method is the fastest and most reliable? Is it the good old wire? Or maybe the dongle? Or we also have Bluetooth. I have reviewed a lot of controllers over the years and I have collected a lot of input delay data along the way. In this video, we're going to shift through them and I'm going to let you know the definitive answer of which is the best. Here's all of the data that I've collected over the years. There's a lot of controllers on here. Some controllers like the self pivot here has all three connection options. So you get wired, you get the dongle, and you also have Bluetooth. The Rekiri Pro and of course the Xbox controller also has all three options. The dongle being the Xbox wireless adapter for PC. Instead of shifting through all of these numbers, I've created another spreadsheet that's going to be a little easier for us to read. First, let's take a look at Wired on the Xbox Series controller. When Wired, the polling rate is about 127. But then when you use the wireless dongle or the adapter, the polling rate goes down to 118 so it's a little less it's not bad but it's less and then when you go to bluetooth it drops significantly all the way to 59 hertz you also see the same pattern here with the rakiri pro 255 hertz wired when using the dongle it drops almost half and then it drops even further when you connect it to bluetooth i've got a little chart here to make it a little easier for us to visualize here you go xbox series x this is the polling rate wired has the highest polling rate and then when you go to the dongle it drops down a little bit when you go to bluetooth significantly and you can see this pattern on all of the controllers take a look at the scuff and vision pro they are really close. Scuff really did a good job with their dongle. The Xbox Series controllers is pretty close as well. And the DualSense Edge, look at this. Look at this big old drop off between wired and Bluetooth. Same thing here on the DualSense Chroma. Same thing with the Razer V3 Pro. Look at this huge drop off between wired and the dongle. As you can see on all of these controllers, every single case, wired, will always, always, always have the fastest polling rate. And after that, the dongle comes in second, and then Bluetooth is just really, really slow. And this chart right here is the average input delay. This is wired, this is the dongle, and this is on Bluetooth. And on the left-hand side column here is the milliseconds of input delay. So the lower it is, the lower the input delay. On the Xbox Series controllers, wired obviously has the fastest input delay. And then the wireless adapter is pretty close, but it's still more than wired. And on Bluetooth, look at this jump. Bam! <laughs> Man, crazy. Same thing here on the Xbox Elite Series 2, but the adapter didn't perform that well compared to the Xbox Series controllers. And Bluetooth on here is just horrific. DualSense Chroma, wired on Bluetooth. And on the DualSense Edge, check this out. Check how low the input delay is on wired. And this is on Bluetooth, it's still pretty fast, but it's way slower than wired. The Envision Pro, pretty close, but wired is faster. Rakiri Pro, wired dongle and bluetooth and on the stealth pivot the bluetooth it's just unplayable over 20 milliseconds of delay look at this so again what's the pattern that we see here wired is the fastest bluetooth is unplayable if you have to use wireless the dongle is the way to go now let's talk about jitter jitter is how stable the connection is and this is measured in milliseconds so the lower it is, the better the connection. For example, on wired, the DualSense Chroma and the Edge has really low jitter. We have 0.02 and 0.03 milliseconds of jitter. Very, very stable connection. The Stealth Pivot, not as good. But when you're looking at all of these on wired, overall they're pretty fast. The slowest one is about two and a half milliseconds. When you go to the dongle, as you can see here, most of them are in the ones and the two and sometimes the three. And when you go to Bluetooth, check this out. Look how high the jitter is. The most stable here is over three milliseconds. That's the DualSense Edge. And the pivot, 22.14 milliseconds of jitter. 
this is practically unplayable on Bluetooth. And here's the chart I have for it. As you can see on Wired, there's barely any jitter at all on most of these controllers. But then when it comes to Bluetooth, <laughs> look at this, look at this one. Oh my God, insane. When you're using the dongle, it's a lot more manageable, right? It's a lot more stable. And this is because unlike Bluetooth, which is a general purpose wireless protocol, Bluetooth will have a lot of interference. Whereas if you have a dedicated dongle, the dongle only communicates to your controller. So there isn't as much interference as if you're using the controller on Bluetooth. Okay, final thoughts. As you can see here, you can see the patterns. I beg you, please do not use Bluetooth. It's horrendous, it's slow, and it's unstable. There's a lot of interference. Just look at these numbers. And if you like playing wireless, then I highly recommend using the dongle or getting a controller that has a dongle included. But obviously the best option is to plug in your controller, use the cable, because the information travels through the cable, so you're not gonna have any interference. So you're gonna have the most stable connection of every single option here. Not only will you have the most stable connection, but you also have the fastest polling rate as well. It's faster than the dongle, and it's way, way, way faster than Bluetooth. So there you go. If your hunch tells you that wired is the best, it is, it really is. As old school as it is, it's still the best way to use your controller. All right, that's gonna be it for me. Hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe for more, and take care now.